Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Charlie Hill. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back up here in Rosebud. It's great to be here. And I'd like to start out, I want to do a little tribute to Floyd Westerman. <laughs> I did a show for members of the American Indian Republican Party. Three of the nicest gentlemen I ever met in my life. <laughs> and they gave George Bush an Indian name. They call him Walking Eagle. Because he's so full of Chesley, he can't walk fly no more. You know. <laughs> All right, it's great to be back here in Rosebud. Floyd Westerman was one of the greatest Indian teachers we ever had, and Butch had said at his funeral he was our greatest Indian ambassador. And I always met him, I met him, and I met him and Lionel at the same time, and Lionel and I had black hair. Those were the days. <laughs> and I, and I uh, had a good, lot of good times at Lionel. He was really respected all over the country. Not so much in the city, but in the country. You know, in the, <laughs> He represents all you Lakotas really well. They speak highly of, of him. You know, right now they have the presidential elections, and Indian politics are quite different from presidential politics in the Wasichu world. In the Wasichu world, I noticed everybody's throwing dirt on each other. They don't talk about spirituality, healing, making the world a better place. They just cut the other guy down. In Indian tribal politics, we don't do that. Indians, we just make the stuff up, you know. And every tribe has somebody that just screwed their nation over and they get kicked out. But three years later they run again like nothing happened. And then they lose by 5,000 votes, but then they want that recount. Oh my God. So now the presidential elections are going on. It's down to the stud and the dud. Obama and McCain. I mean, my God, I don't get it. And America is always afraid. They're afraid of people of color. They're afraid of indigenous people. They're afraid of the Hasapa. And they're all going, are we ready for a black president? I say, why not? We just had a retarded one. <laughs> well, anyway, I wrote something I wanted to do for Floyd here. This kind of describes all facets of him. And he would be going, eh, well, don't be talking about me, boy. You know? And him and I would tease each other. You know, I was really close to him a long time, and Lionel knew him even longer. And Dennis and him were born a long time ago. I mean, a long, I mean, their mother was Eve. That's how old these guys are. Dennis Banks used to babysit Moses, you know? I mean, my God. So this is for Floyd. 
And if y'all knew him, you remember him well. Dakota man, guitar man, family man, fighting man, aimster man, powwow man, angry man, laughing man, loving man, giving man, grumpy man, peji man, Dancing man, peaceful man, ladies man, holy man, horny man, <laughs> music man, fry bread man, country man, soul man, show man, shaw man, western man. But he taught me things, and I would just say the best way to honor him, I'll pass on things he taught me to tell you all. You know, we had some people give you some great wisdom and everything, but he had always had told me, you know, the white man ain't gonna kill us, the white food is. We gotta watch what we eat. And then he says, if you don't know your language, learn 10 words of it, and that's doable. And you don't know your ceremonies, at least you can still pray with your tobacco. You know, I think the Lakota Nation, you're all just living proof that you cannot extinguish the human spirit. I mean, my God, you all been, you know, Christianized, Anglicized, Americanized. They really tried to do that, but, but you're connected to the spirit. You know, they couldn't get rid of you. You know, you were like that Energizer Bunny. You just keep going and going and going. And I always thought that Energizer Bunny must be Indian because he always had that little drum he carried around, you know. <laughs> and I know you had some rough times here, you had your tragedies and you all know about all that. But now's your time to look at yourself and turn poison into medicine. Because it's the time to really elevate ourselves and teach these kids. You know, we always talk about how bad alcohol is or drugs, but if you put them away, the spirit works through you. The spirit always works through you. It never fails. You know, and, and young ones are in gangs. You guys ain't gang bangers. You ain't bad. Come to Detroit or LA, New York. They'll eat you up. You're just a bunch of wannabes. It's time for you to be warriors for your people. <laughs> you know, they talk about the drive by shootings. Your ancestors are a lot tougher than you because they survived the original drive-by shootings by all those cavalry people that came out here. Those are the original drive-bys. <laughs> I asked Floyd Westerman once, I said, did you ever steal anything, Floyd? He says, I never steal, I take. <laughs> so I thought, so you get to a hotel room, folks, from now on, you go to a place that doesn't belong to the tribe, you know, take a pen, an ink pen, a towel, a shoe, little by little, we're gonna get it all back. That's what I say. <laughs> Floyd also told me to help people. That's the big purpose in life, help other people. That's it. Everything else is details. You just help other people. And he once told me there are things in your life that you need to take care of both of your health. You know, is the health is our number one thing here. We, we took care of the spirituality, but now uh, we gotta take care of our health then we got to take care of our minds because what you think about that you attract and there's no limitation to your mind the spirituality if you align with the spirit you are a majority if one person is in here aligned with the spirit you are a majority because spiritual energy is stronger than nuclear war stronger than the government stronger than america stronger than anything it doesn't know limitations it doesn't know any time power or limits you know and if you get knocked down 10 times in your life get up 11 times <laughs> So that's what I had learned from Floyd, and I want to pass it all on to you. You know, all as, as Indian people, we are all born into greatness. That's our birthright, but we're programmed into mediocrity, and it's time to break that cycle and become who we really are. You know, we are the landlords of this country, and we can fix this country. The answer to healing America comes to Indian people. Simple, because we have the owner's manual, that's why. Thank you very much, thank you, thank you.